Just for you, just to see this huge explosion of podcasts and what it's become, it must be like an unbelievable thing to see, to be there from the start, to now see some of these podcasts have got the biggest media properties in the world. I mean, this pod- podcast has changed my life. I, I podcast because of Rich Roll. I don't know if you know him. No. I met him during my vegan time, actually, run, mm-hmm. uh, running, and he's got a very successful podcast, changed his life. And I, I just said, I want your life. <laughs> How do you do this? I mean, sort of, this is exactly my point, though. Yeah. I don't know this guy. I've never heard of him. I'm not interested in what he's talking about. You just said he has a very successful podcast. Yeah. I don't care how you measure that. That's success. I love that. That's that's where we need to be going. That type of success. But but what do you make of this growth in podcasting? Because I think it, podcasting for me is now the most important uh, media channel in the world. It's it's way like no, for the because pod- no one controls it, brother. Well, it's that, it, but the, they do a little bit. No, if you no. have an exclusive deal with someone, they might take some shows off. That's not a podcast to me. Okay, okay, that's a fair point. But tw- Twitter becomes a problem because it's low friction to follow someone, and any, anyone can follow you and just start giving you shit. If someone makes the effort to listen to a, an hour, two hour show, they care about what you're doing, which was what I was thinking about earlier when you talked about your community. That's something we've not done: is build a community around our show. But actually, that's probably better to do than try and build a community around Twitter because it's just it's a shit show. But but I think podcasts have become the most important medium because you have to spend time having a conversation, even if you disagree with them. I don't. I haven't agreed with everything you said today, but we have a conversation, and it makes you think, and it makes you go back and consider things. It's saying the people listening in. But what is it like for you as an external person to see this? Because you spawned a multi-billion-dollar industry. Mm-hmm. It must be just fascinating to watch. I am, I am living the happiest days of my motherfucking life. I am so, I'm elated at what's happening. What you just said, I mean, that that is truly what makes me, I mean, I, I could shoot, I'm 57, you know, I should be maybe thinking about retiring. I'm, I'm doing four shows a week. I'm doing more shit than ever. I'm doing, it, showing all aspects of me. But to see what the the a, a generation younger <clears throat> really millennials what they're doing with it where they're taking it how they're understanding how to build community i i, I really want to stress the uh, fuck twitter mastodon we've had our instance of, we cut it off at ten thousand. that's all we wanted because it's, it's a lot to manage but you can federate so anybody can manage their own little community everybody can come in you can create your own rules it's very bitcoin like and that has become a very high signal to noise ratio versus Twitter, which is the inverse. And once you get past the, oh, but no one will see it, well, of the bots and the trolls and the fuckwads you don't need in your life anyway. Yep. Many people have dual accounts. It's not crazy. People have Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. You add one, maybe one goes away. But people start gravitating towards this there's no algos is really the main thing because there's no profit motive. So <clears throat> you're not constantly triggered with a conversation that was triggering coming back, coming back. It scrolls off. It's like, you're done. That is just kind of done and it, and it fizzles, fizzles on. Danny, put Mastodon on our to-do list. And you, you, can, okay. you can set up a Mastodon server, masto.host, for I think five euros a month. But well, let me, to let answer me, your question, yeah. though, fucking mind-blowing. Yeah. Well, I, let, let me just tell you, just mom, for, for, for I some, made it, mom. For some perspective, <laughs> just so you understand, uh-huh. uh, at the time I set up the podcast, my company collapsed, my marriage mm-hmm. collapsed, and I was recovering drug addict. Mm-hmm. And you I got the trifecta, bro. Everything was shit. Mm-hmm. And I met this guy, Rich, and I saw his life, and I was like, I'm going to start a podcast. And I hadn't, didn't have much money, and I just made this effort go around with my little case with two mics, a Zoom H6, mm-hmm. and I started interviewing people. Mm-hmm. And in the space of four years, it's absolutely changed mine and my family's life. It now is a thing whereby we book two, we, I mean, I travel the world. I've been to 40 countries with the podcast, four, mm-hmm. 40 countries. Uh, I've been to Venezuela. And not, Greece, just, and not just staying in, in posh hotels. You've been in migrant camps and crazy ass shit. I've, I've heard you. Yeah, but now we're at the point where we go. So here, we've come to Texas for a few weeks. Uh, Danny flies in from Australia. Jeremy flies in from Philly. I fly in from Bedford. I we drove come, in from Hill Country. You drove in from Hill Country. <laughs> guests, guests fly in. We've got this. Rather than one little tiny case, it's, Jeremy, how many cases do you bring? Eight. 
eight cases. Dude, eight you need cases. a carnet for all this shit at this point. I mean, that's like... Uh, we get to we get to create this content. People appreciate it. People have started podcasts because of my podcast. Yes, uh, I, yes. It's impacted my children's life. Like the, the this podcast virus has been yeah. the most positive virus in my life, my friend's life. Danny dropped me an email one day and said, "Can I do your audio?" And I said, "Yeah." Now he travels the world with me and does this. He's changed all of our lives. So but, but thank that, you. Uh, no, thank you for just seeing the vision of it. What's so be- the reason why it works is because of its simplicity. And we'll just start with the... the si- and integrity. Yeah, it doesn't work without integrity. Nope. Uh, and civility is in there somewhere too. That's what Tony Khan from WGBH, who brought NPR public media screaming and kicking into it. Very visionary. He says it's the civility here because, first of all, we don't employ a lot of tricks. You know, you had your your Zoom H6, you had your two mics, you know, but you could have used that. You could have had a whole truck with it. It doesn't matter. You you can podcast. You could have recorded on your phone. And then the simplicity of an RSS feed, which at its core, any anybody who can read can look at this and go, I kind of understand what's going on here. And I, I kind of see what has to happen because, you know, it's in English. It's called really simple syndication. All you need is a text editor, an MP3 file, and a server to put it somewhere. And you're podcasting. And then... And then and you can take on CNN. Oh, you but and, but CNN is... This is, this is the, the, the joke of it all. If you look at absolute numbers, CNN is nothing compared to... Our two shows together would kick CNN's ass for three days in a row. Cumulative. But it's, it's you know, we're still coming out of the the throes of, you know, whatever the, the mainstream media was. That takes decades sometimes, but it's going really fast. You know, the the 30-year-olds today, they don't have cable. They're not watching CNN. You know, they, they, they'll watch some stuff on YouTube. What's sad and what we have to get people out of is the the melatonin addiction or the, the yeah. melatonin, there's uh, serotonin, uh, all these different chemicals that are firing in your brain when you get recognized, get liked, get retweeted, get, you know, whatever it is, positive comments. And now we've gotten to the point where it's a game. It's gamified whether you're going to get kicked off or not. And we're now focusing more on, oh, can I say something? Oh, I I, I might get kicked off of YouTube. I get kicked off to Twitter. Oh, you all, I can't believe you did that. You're going to get kicked off. And they forget about what they were talking about, really. Yeah. That, well, that's just kind of gone away. And it's so polluted. It's I know. polluted. The, it's the, the one, river of vomit. The one thing I'm I'm worried about, and I worry about myself, but broadly as well, is audience capture. There is a real risk of likes, downloads, uh, at, uh, clicks, retweets, of, of you getting captured by your audience. I, I think the best thing mm-hmm. is always to talk to as many people you disagree with as you agree with and try and push yourself. But I felt the tug of audience capture. I can, there's, I know there's certain tweets I can put out about Bitcoin. It's going to get 10,000 likes. Yeah, it, but like, I think it's very important to just try and avoid that. Because if we do make that mistake, I think even podcasts, some podcasts can end up making the same mistakes as mainstream media does, whereby they're also driven by this, this similar incentive model of advertising. Therefore, they want to get their downloads up. Therefore, they absolutely back into the corner of their audience. To, to me, podcasting is really, the, there's no wrong way to do it, but... It's the antithesis of advertising media. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> if only for the reason that you can fast forward through the commercial. And mm-hmm. You can fast forward through this. So what's the point of it? <clears throat> have, have, you ever, it have you ever looked at the numbers though? Because it's quite surprising. The no, one time, sure, do a lot of people listen anyway? Yeah. So uh, mm-hmm. the one time I looked, it was a long time ago, only 20% of people fast forwarded through the ads, which really surprised me. Only 15% of people fast forward through our donation segment. Interesting. And I think because it's content, yeah. um, people are feeding something back. Um, by the way, to the value for value model, transparency is, an, is a key point. So we, we thank people and tell you how much they gave us. You can sit there and count and see how much we got. Mm-hmm. We've never cared. I, by coincidence, I found out we had about 1.4 million listeners to the No Agenda show. Just for, it was a small window of time. We could actually track something accurately because of the index work. But... I've only cared about, can I pay my rent? That's all it's ever been. That's all I ever said. I, I can pay my rent. Great. We've got another good show to go. Um, with my stance on Russia and Ukraine and not showing the compassion some people are programmed to expect, 
I had many people say, I'm never going to, never going to send you value again. You've ruined it for me. I'm, I'm never going to listen. Well, that means it's working. Well, it's, it's how it's supposed to work. Yeah. It's how it's supposed to work. And that's good. You know, and, and I've refunded people money too. It was like, you're that pissed off. No, let me give you your $50 back, please. Absolutely. This, this somehow there's something in our, um, in our human psyche, our psychology that makes this work, that makes us want to interact. And if anything, everything that's being built around us, certainly from big tech is meant to fuck with us. And, and I mean, these are not secrets. Yep. Um, my God, this new filter on Instagram, which is now nonstop the, you know, how I look beautiful filter, which is just every, every guys, everyone's using it. I don't know. I, I must be just weird that way that I think that can't be good that when you look in the mirror and see your real self. And what is that doing to your image, to your self-worth, all of this shit? Well, Jonathan Haidt studied the impact. Fantastic yeah. books he's written. Fantastic yeah. I mean, books. my yeah. daughter is not allowed Instagram for that exact, exact reason. She's upset about it. But it's like... What I'd like is when it comes to education, every kid, their parents should give them an old laptop and a Linux uh, distro and install this and then when that's set up set up a mastodon server i'll help you punch the hole in the firewall at the, at the cable modem and get on that with your friends start there start to get an umbral i think that not umbral specifically but yeah, the category because you have start nine umbral raspberry mm -hmm. but umbral you know even the the ready-made bit bitcoin machines box which of course i had to have one in orange just because like oh this i've been waiting for this it's so cool. and it's not so much that you have uh, a full node and you have a lightning node, um, but also Nextcloud, you know, and click Nextcloud is there. Oh my God, it's everything I really need. It kind of does all the things that Microsoft Office or any of these full on productivity suites would do. And with the benefit, once you figure out how to work in this brave new world, you can actually go somewhere and talk to the guy who made it yep. and say, hey bro, <laughs> let me buy you a coffee tip, you know, lightning invoice. Um, this, I've really been looking for something like this. Is it possible you make that? And you know what? These guys actually answer. So, I mean, this is, the, this is when we figure out that we can have the products we want built the way we want, we might figure out that we can elect politicians we really want.